My guest today is Nick Molnar. Nick, how you doing? I'm doing all right, man, as well as can be. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty well. I'm, I'm locked up here in my home, but it's a nice home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got champagne problems compared to a lot of the things going on in the world today. So That's exactly the way I look at it. Like, every once in a while, I catch myself whining about, oh, yeah, I can't go to the coffee shop today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. whining. It's not a... <laughs> I do worry uh, a little bit that the champagne will go flat one day, but oh, for right now, I'm good. Thoughts and prayers, buddy. Thoughts and yeah, prayers. <laughs> thank you. Uh, what do you? I haven't seen you in so long. What What are you doing now? Yeah, it is. It is great to see you. So I I am a PM on the Visual Studio Code Spaces team now. Code Space. That's a new name, right? It is a new name. Yes. It, so formerly Visual Studio Online. And it's a Azure service that provides compute very specifically crafted for developers. So you're able to point the service at some code repository that you have. We will spin up a developer environment for you in a matter of seconds that includes all of the tools and configuration and source code, everything that you need to be productive. And then you can connect to that environment from anywhere. You can connect to it from Visual Studio Code uh, you'll be able to connect to it from Visual Studio. Actually, uh, that capability is in private preview today. And then you can also just open up a web browser and connect to the environment and code completely in a browser. Oh, wow. All right, so uh, that's a lot of different paradigms here. Let's start with the browser. So in the browser, there's some JavaScript running that sort of looks like Visual Studio or sort of looks like Visual Studio Code. Is that right? It is Visual Studio Code running in the browser. It is. That's the same code. Because, browser, because that's uh, that's a Chromium thing, right? Or it's a, uh, what is it, Atom? Uh, Electron. It? Electron, that's what. <laughs> yeah, so the, so, the, so the desktop editor is shipped in Electron, right? Which basically um, kind of, it's, you can think it's of the browser Electron without as, the browser. As, uh, yeah, is as, as Node and, and Chromium glued together, right? And so, yeah, VS Code has always been built on a web stack. And so now it runs in a browser and connects to the back end environment that we provision for you so that you can do your code with that oh, but yeah it's, cool. it's full on vs code which means you can install extensions you get the wow. debugger you get the terminal you get everything that you would expect from the vs code experience you know and love uh, i want to stick with the browser here because it's, it's um so if I'm, I'm i'm experiencing if i'm using visual studio code on my desktop the files i'm working with are on my desktop if i'm if i'm doing the same thing in the browser with code space is that, where are those files? Where is the source code located? So if you're using the CodeSpaces browser editor, they're located in the remote development environment. Okay. So imagine effectively that we're spinning up a VM for you, a very okay. specialized VM, and then we git clone your repo into that thing. So everything that you do is running in that remote. So if you're using the browser, it's in the remote. But also, if you just like to use your desktop editor because you already have it there installed, you can install the Visual Studio Code Spaces extension into VS Code. And then you can basically take the desktop editor and point it at your remote. And then all of the files are remote. All of the processing is remote. So when you hit hmm. build, that's going to happen remotely. When you debug, that happens remotely. When you get IntelliSense and um, syntax highlighting, all, all of that is happening remotely. And so what VS Code on your desktop is doing in that case is it's really just kind of acting like the browser. It's a thin okay. rendering layer. And so you don't kind of run into resource contention. Or I, like If you're anything like me, right? I've got a million Outlook messages coming in all the time. I maybe have a couple of PowerPoint decks open. Maybe uh, I'm streaming music on Spotify. Right? I have all these things happening on my machine competing for the resources my dev environment needs. With VS Code Spaces, you don't have to worry about that because that code space is dedicated to just working on your project. Oh, interesting. And uh, the source code, you said it's it's over on your server space somewhere, right? I mean, what, is it there tomorrow? What if I if I shut this down and come back tomorrow? Is there a spot somewhere in the cloud that's mine? Yeah, uh, exactly. So you get to control the lifetime of the environment. And so um, we really think of these environments as being task-based, right? So maybe you're going to uh, review a PR today, and that's going to take you 30 minutes. You click the button, you're going to spin up an environment. That'll take 30 seconds. You do your 30, 45 minute review. And when you're done, just delete it and throw it away. Because tomorrow, if you need to do work on that same repo, maybe maybe you're going to go add a feature in a new branch. You click a button, and just like that, you get another environment. 
Now, maybe, maybe that feature that you're adding is going to take you a couple of days. That's fine. You can walk away. The environment will stay there for you. We'll actually s automatically spin it down into basically a low power, low cost state. So while you're sleeping, you know, you're not paying a uh, premium. You basically kind of pay for what you use. So okay. when you're not using it, it's, you know, fractions of a penny an hour. Um, but when you come back, all of your state is there. All of your changes are there. You can pick up right where you left off. Oh, great. So I don't have to shelve my changes at a source control. If I'm not ready to do that, I can just, uh, just, just like, I do it home often. I'll, uh, I'm in the middle of something. I'll go have lunch. I don't check everything in necessarily. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Same same kind of scenario. So you kind of get to choose how you how you want to use it. Okay. Uh, so what's uh, now? You, this is a plugin for Visual Studio Code, and it, it's going to allow me to essentially take a lot of that work, a lot of that process, and push it out to the cloud somewhere. Is that is that all that it does, or does it add new features that I wouldn't ordinarily have if I were working? I would say the uh, locally. The biggest feature to think about that it adds is it really simplifies getting started with a code base. Okay. So, and, and, and that has, uh, you know, value in a couple of different scenarios, right? Maybe you're having somebody new join your team, right? It's like when you started up the current project that you're working on right, right now, Dave, how long did it take you to get to a place where you were productive? Oh, <laughs> well, it took it did take me a few days, and I'll tell you what. When I was a consultant, a few days was magic. It would take me sometimes weeks to get productive yeah. because sometimes yeah. I had to get a machine from the customer and uh, have that set up and configured and uh, login credentials set up and access to their network. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, imagine if you showed up at that client site and they said hey, go read this wiki, and oh, by the way, there's a link in that wiki. When you click on it, it's going to give you a programming environment in 30 seconds that has everything that you need ready to go. I'd probably die right there on the spot. <laughs> exactly. So that that is one of the biggest features of Visual Studio code spaces. I've got to get, I, I got to get, get used to the new name. <laughs> yeah, um, well, we'll reveal this now. We're actually, uh, by the time this goes live, it'll be called code spaces, but in the point in time where we're talking, that hasn't been, you and I are the only ones that know this. <laughs> yes, exactly. You and my lips scoop. are sealed. <laughs> so I if trust it leaks, you. If, we le if it leaks, we know it's you. <laughs> we know where to come from. Uh, so yeah, so so onboarding a new person or onto a new project or, you know, there's been times where I'm like, oh, I want to go like tinker around with Rust or something like that, right? But uh, Oh, uh, you know, like, am I going to install that on my machine and maybe risk messing up my perfectly yeah. tuned machine? No, I just click a button. When I'm done with the environment, I throw it away. Um, so that's really kind of a big thing. The other thing is Visual Studio Code Spaces, the code spaces themselves are, um, uh, they come equipped with collaboration in mind. So have you heard of Visual Studio Live Share? I have. Yeah, so Live Share is built right in. And so you can be in a browser editing click, you know, start this collaboration session, and I can invite you in. I'm working in a browser, you're working in a browser, we have the full power of Visual Studio Code backing our, our experience. That's just built in. As well as IntelliCode, have you, have you heard of that? I don't think so, what is that? So IntelliCode is our AI-assisted um, kind of code completion uh, service. So what what IntelliCode does is we go and we scan the biggest repos, the most used repos for all these different languages across GitHub. So, you know, you know and love IntelliSense, right? That is the compiler telling you, here's the members that hang off of this object, right? I say that was a wonderful invention. Wonderful invention. This is the next level of not only here's all the things that are potentially available according to um, the type system. Here's the actual members that people use in this context the most often. So if you're inside mm -hmm. of the, the, the parentheses of an if statement and you're, and you're working with a string, right? You say string dot, length is gonna be the first thing that gets suggested to you or yeah. index of, because that's the kind of thing that you would check inside of an if statement. Mm -hmm. If you are outside of the if statement, maybe it's gonna be split or replace or substring or something right. like that, right? And so it learns not only the patterns of everybody else, but the patterns of your own code base to help apply those those things that make you that much faster when you program. Yeah, that is nice, especially for something like string, which has 10 gazillion properties and methods on it. Pressing yeah. dot is less helpful unless you know what you're looking for. Exactly. And I, I will say, like, I'll, I'll give you one last one because you asked 
you know what, what is kind of special about a code space. <clears throat> code spaces in and of themselves are I, I, I say that they're configurable and they're personalizable. And so there's kind of two elements of levers that you can pull. So you can customize the code space environment on a per repo basis, right? So if you and I are collaborating on some project, we can go and add one JSON file into that repo and that will dictate what operating system we should be running the project on, uh, what tools should be installed, what extensions we need to help us work on this project, all of these things. So you and I are working on the exact same dev environment, virtually eliminating the, the, those old like works on my machine problems, right? Wow. And if we bring in a new person, they get that exact same set of customization. But it's also personalizable because there's different things about you and I and the way that we work that even though we want all of that kind of stuff, our run times and our, yeah. our tool chains to be the same, Maybe I'm a dark theme guy, right. you're a light theme guy, right? I have a certain set of aliases that I like and know to run on my machine. Like I use, I call it guac because I'm from Texas, but you know, GAC, GAC. Um, that's, that's my git add commit, right? I use that command all the time on the terminal. Maybe you have some different aliases that you like to use. So your own personal opinion is also stacked on top of hmm. that customized environment. So it feels just like your local dev environment immediately. That is really nice. That's that uh, thing about pushing a button, having your dev environment ready in 30 seconds. That actually uh, that resonates with the project I'm on now because I am, for the first time in my life, writing Java code. I'm oh. writing an app. I've never done any Java before. and uh, it, For the last week and a half, I've been doing that, and it's... Um, I had to install Spring and Spring Boot. I had to install Java, of course. Well, my, my solution was to build a virtual machine in Azure and do that all there because I didn't want I don't know what these th you know the, the, the Java virus is going to do when I install it locally I, I mean yep. I, I actually I'm not I'm not dissing other operating systems those, those, those are cool but uh, but I don't know the point is I don't know what's going to happen it's going to it's going to change some configuration it's going to be hard to uninstall well let's setting up a virtual machine it's not hard but it takes time and it's it's not 30 seconds that's for sure yeah, you should you should head over to Code Spaces and give it a try. I'd love to hear your feedback. I think that you would be happy with the experience. I, I will. Tell me when you say head over to Code Spaces. Where is that? Uh, today and probably by the time that this uh, this launches, online.visualstudio.com. Online.visualstudio.com. I'm going there right now. Online. I'll put a note, uh, link to that in the show notes as well. Perfect. Perfect. I have to type it all out, which tells me that I have not been there yet. <laughs> Uh, what am I going to find? So on here, is there... Uh, so so what you're telling me is you're a man of journalistic integrity and you did lots <laughs> of research before this call. <laughs> I was out riding my bike through the empty streets of Chicago <laughs> just before I sat down. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, and so what do I do? I see a big button that says get started. What's going to happen when I do that? Uh, so when you hit get started, it's going to pop up and ask you to log in. Uh -huh. So this, even though this is called Visual Studio Code Spaces or, or Visual Studio Online, this is really an Azure service, right? So okay. any Azure credits you maybe have or any Azure subscriptions that you already have, set, you're going to be able to use. Um, uh -huh. okay. So when you when you do that, uh, it'll take you kind of right back into our entry po uh, portal, right? It's just going to have a, a way to hit another giant button that says create environment. I see it. Okay, we fast forward here past the 30 second startup and I'm, I'm now initializing my environment. Can you, can you tell me what's going on? What behind the scenes is sure. this doing? So what, what actually happens is we have a VM sitting at the ready and we put a Docker container on that VM. Now that Docker container can be based off of an image that you point to or uh, you could have a Docker file in your repo that will discover and then build and run uh, on your behalf. Uh, effectively, that that Docker container is what allows you to customize your environment to be okay. whatever you want it to be. But uh, we run on top of a VM that's isolated and just for you for for security uh, purposes. Uh, so that's what's happening. And then inside of that Docker container, we're we're cloning in your source code if if you provided a, a uh, Git repo URL. Okay, and I then, actually skipped over that one when I did this. That, that's <laughs> fine. So you'll you'll just get um, an environment that has all those same tools that we would install by default, but no source code. You'll be able to go and you know create a new file, a new project, or something like that. Okay, and is this the same process I do if I'm going to use work locally in Visual Studio Code? 
It is, yeah. It, I mean, it looks a little bit different, the, the browser UI versus the VS Code UI, but you'll say that you want to create a new environment. There's a command for that in the command palette, and then it will ask you the same set of questions. What git URL? Um, you know, what do you want to name it? And then it'll spin up and connect to it. Oh, so if to get to that command in the command palette, I need to install a plugin for Visual Studio Code. Is that right? You do. Yeah, you'll have to install the Visual Studio Code Spaces extension. Got it. From the Visual Studio Marketplace. Yeah, and is there a plugin also for uh, Visual Studio itself? So the Visual Studio support is currently in private preview, and it is built into Visual Studio. So uh, if and when you get access to that, you can sign up to get access today. Um, it just is there uh, out of the box. Hmm. Very cool. Uh, what's um, now? You're you're the. I always forget what uh, the title is. You're the uh, program manager, product um, yeah, manager. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the program managers. Program on the manager. Team. Okay. <laughs> what's um? Uh, so you're in charge of figuring out what cool new features might go into this thing, right? I am. Yeah, I do that, and I talk to customers and folks like you all day long just to see how the service is helping or where it could be better and, and things like that. Exactly. Can you share some of the things that are on the roadmap besides the name change? Uh, yeah, sure. So one of the options that um, uh, we kind of glossed over and talking about, it, as we, we said, you can pick the repo URL and the name of the environment. One of the other options there is an instance type, which is basically how much horsepower do you want to have um, uh, as the underlying VM, right? And okay. so we have kind of standard, which is going to give you four cores and eight gigs of RAM, or you can go a premium, which is going to give you even even more kind of horsepower. I did see that when I set up. I picked the smaller yeah. one. Those are the two options available today. We're going to add a few more tiers there. We're going to introduce a, a basic, which would be two cores and four gigs of RAM. And remember, those two cores and four gigs of RAM are dedicated just to what your editing experience is, right? So it's actually a really fantastic experience. And because you're running in the cloud, you get way better bandwidth than nearly anybody has on their on their normal laptop. So, right. um, so it's a great experience. We're also introducing a, a more premium than premium instance type, which will have a GPU available. Hmm. So if you need to do any any kind of machine learning or you know some kind of a program uh, programming model where that would be helpful, it'll be available to you. Uh, I'll say we're doing one other thing. So, so I mentioned that you can point to a Docker image or a Docker file to customize your environment. Mm -hmm. We are adding support for pointing to a Docker compose file, and that will allow you to spin up multiple images and have them all composed together. So it's very easy to maybe, you know, point to a MySQL. Uh, image on Docker Hub or Redis or some other kind of service that you might need like that in your dev environment and make that um, there and available for you in very much the same way. Oh, nice. What about the file system? Is that also available to you as you're editing? Yeah, but is, you is have full C drive? Yeah, yes, there is. That's a good question. And, and I, I glossed over that. This is your VM. You have full control over it. You have terminal access, delete files you want to delete, install oh. things you want to install, party on it, do whatever you want to. We'll persist all of those changes and save them when you walk away. So when you come back, they're still there. Oh, interesting. Uh, but, but yeah, you have full access. So this isn't just a, a, a PaaS offering. This is, this, it is, but it's way beyond that as well. It's, yeah, it's very it's powerful because, because developers need those kinds of things, right? How developers need to NPM install things and NuGet install things, or I guess you're probably Maven installing things nowadays. <laughs> well, now that I'm a Java expert. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm going to start calling you for all my Java queries. Um, yeah, right. And, and text-based CLI tooling is so ingrained in how developers work these days, right? We, we have to give you those things to be productive. And so we're Got not it. trying to slow anybody down. We want you to be as productive as you've ever been and more. This sounds really amazing. I'm going to start trying this. Uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we haven't that that we should have? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say uh, one other thing. We, we'll talk a little bit about pricing. Basically, okay. the way that the service works is you get charged for the active time that you're developing, mm -hmm. and when you go inactive, and as I I mentioned, we'll automatically put you into an inactive state. You there was one more setting. There's four settings on that create screen, right? We've gone through three of them now. Oh, the, yeah. One was how long idle, how much idle time. How much idle time, right? And so by default, if you've been idle for 30 minutes, 
will automatically kind of spin you down into low power state. You won't lose any of your changes. Um, you just won't have the, the CPU uh, running anymore. Um, so the pricing works that you pay for active time with a nominal charge for inactive time. Uh, and and it, you know, depending on how much hardware, how much horsepower you're picking in your instance type, it costs more or less, right? So it's, right. it's 46 cents for an entirely active hour on the basic SKU. I think it's 88 cents for an entirely active hour on the premium SKU. The basic SKU that we're introducing is gonna be 24 cents an hour. I might be a penny or two off on that uh, that price, but it's somewhere in that ballpark. We have another option that we um, really just beefed up a couple of weeks ago that is what we call self-hosting. So, so far, everything that we've talked about has been your environment running in Azure, and we provision that and manage it for you. But maybe you have a perfectly tuned dev environment sitting under your desk or at the office that you don't get to very often. You can go and install our self-hosted agent and register that machine with Visual Studio Online and get many of the benefits of Visual Studio Online, including the ability to go to online.visualstudio.com in your browser mm -hmm. and open up the Visual Studio Code of View into that machine. Oh, and that's 100% cool. free. Oh, wow. Excellent. Uh, well, I really appreciate your time here spent with us. I, before I go, I wanted to congratulate you on you uh, have now visited every single ballpark, major league ballpark, which I is have. a goal of mine. I had, I had, I think seven left when you made your goal. And, uh, and once the season starts up again, I'll have eight because they're opening a new one in Dallas. Yes. Uh, so I have to go back to Dallas now. <laughs> Agreed. I'm going back to Dallas to make it my 35th actually. Uh, I've, well, I've been to, I've, I've been to more than 35. I should say that. Because okay, I, started, that's a... I started before you did. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of stadiums that have since been torn down. <laughs> I am certainly missing baseball right now, but that is awesome. Congrats! Actually, maybe um, you should check out the the demo app that I built to show off Visual Studio Code Spaces is called Ballpark Tracker, Ballpark and it's a map. Tracker. What's what's the URL for that? It's uh, GitHub.com/slash my my handle Nick N I K M D two three slash ballpark dash tracker ballpark dash tracker. what does that do uh so that launches a little um well it launches a visual well so there's a button on there that says open in visual studio online uh it's, it's you know that hasn't this hasn't been renamed yet when you click on that it will launch you directly into an environment with everything set up to run that application. It requires Node and Mongo. Node and Mongo will be on that box for you. You'll be able to start making changes. And when you press F5 and run it, it's going to give you a map of the United States with all of the stadiums. And you can go and click on each stadium and check off which one you've been to. And there's a little counter that goes all the way up to 30. And there's a little oh, Easter egg once perfect. you check off all 30. Uh -huh. So that was how I was tracking my, my journey over the years. Oh, excellent. Now, now what about uh, stadiums? Can I add stadiums to this? Because I've been to like a uh, oh, Riverfront Stadium and uh, Tiger Stadium. Stadiums don't exist anymore. All of the data for the list of stadiums is just a JSON file. You'll find it in the data folder. And yes, you have full full control over it. So you can go and add an entry to Tiger Stadium in that JSON file and it'll pop up on the map. Uh, you've just given me a project to do while I'm quarantined <laughs> here. And, and, and I'm checking, I, uh, oh, you know what? I've been to 34 ballparks. I haven't been to more than 35. I just, I've just looked at my list. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, you got it. You I've been to 11 that don't exist anymore. <laughs> and of course, I mean, it's a fun little sample app, but it's open source. Anybody can go and play with it. It's a great way to kind of play around with and see some of the full feature set of VS Code Spaces. But I also take pull requests, Dave. So feel oh, free to. I was thinking of that maybe maybe photos of your yeah. trip. Adding that. Oh yeah, that'd be great. You'll also <laughs> notice um, in the in the data set by default, I don't show the AAA stadiums. But there's one line of code that you can change to get 30 AAA stadiums show, uh, to pop up because that's my next my next life challenge is to get oh, to all of those. I, I haven't been to I've been to a bunch of those. Milb.com, I think, is the list for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're exactly right. <laughs> all right. Well, Nick, thank you so much. And, uh, not a problem. Thank you for having me, buddy. It's always good to see you. I'm super thankful that I have technology right now that keeps me up to date with my friends while I'm stuck at home.